Tonight, Karate Combat makes its live debut to the world, coming to you from Miami, Florida. The specially designed Karate Combat Pit has been placed outdoors and just off of Biscayne Bay in this vibrant city's downtown for a truly spectacular setting. It's Karate Combat Inception, and it begins now. Hey everyone, with the great Boss Rootin, I'm Sean Wheelock. Really glad that you're with us for our first ever live broadcast worldwide for Karate Combat. Boss, on tap, truly, we're going to see some of the greatest fighters in this sport, hailing from three different continents. We will also see a real contrast in styles. You know, when I found out that Karate was going to make this comeback, I go, dude, sign me up. Boom, there's that Suki right there for you. And especially with the Olympics coming up, 2020 in Tokyo, the Olympics are going to have the same set of rules that we here have at, the, uh, 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 at this event. Only this is full contact, and there it's not. So all the fighters around the world, they want to come to this organization so they can start learning to go to the Olympics. A fighter who we will see on this stack card with a really aggressive style, the American from Louisiana, Josh Quayhagen. Josh Quayhagen, man, gritty and technique. And normally when you say those words together, it doesn't match your fighter because you're either gritty or you have technique, but he has both. He's constantly pushing his opponent. He never lets down. He's like white on white. On top of that, he has a lot of technique. Nick, that's going to be a great fight. All these fights are coming your way under the auspices of the Florida Commission. We have a unique new rule set and scoring system. A big night ahead, and we are now set for our main event. Andres Virag versus El Haji Indoor, set at the catch weight of 191 pounds, tops this card tonight. Coming in, both fighters' boss, supremely confident, both saying they are coming for the quick and violent knockout. Oh, yeah, and Andor is like to be called Black Magic. This guy has the reach advantage, and his opponent, he loves to throw roundhouse kicks, but he needs to fight inside. Can he fight inside? Because Andor, Black Magic, his favorite thing to do is to leg trip them to the sweeps. So at the moment he comes in, he might sweep him, and then he can go for that ground and pound that we have for five seconds here. We're going to find out who can win this fight. Ooh, it's going to be hard. We're outdoors under the star of the Atlantic Ocean just behind us. So pleased to be with the great Boss Rutten, and we are ready now for our first fight of the night. Division. Spiros Mogari Topolis from Greece versus Mohamed Salem Mohamed from Mauritania. All fighters tonight for Karate Combat Inception here in downtown Miami arriving to the pit in Rolls Royces. Wow, that's quite a difference from me in Japan in Kobe. We did this at a shopping mall and we would come down the escalators. That's the craziest entrance I ever had. This is the coolest though. The fighters will exit their respective Rolls Royces and then walk through a parade of cars which features Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Which one are you gonna take home tonight, Sean? I actually walked here from the hotel, boss. I think you took an Uber. <laughs> I walked too. Spiros Margari Topolis from Greece says his best asset as a fighter is that he's very strong mentally and he is always extremely prepared. You know, those are the key things. And stamina. Mohamed Salem Mohamed he's feels doing he a few has touch very natural power. He said he's going to throw a lot of big punches and big kicks from the start of this fight. 
Margari Topless holds the rank of purple belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Boss, he said, cross taint training really helps him with his takedowns, which are allowed here in karate combat. You know what? Yeah, it, it's a great tool. And because you can take him down, and from the top, you can start raining down punches for five seconds. The person on the bottom is allowed to kick, to use up kicks. The person raining down the punches is not allowed to kick any kick to the body of his opponent. You see Mohammed Salem Mohammed still awaiting the appearance of Spiros Margari Topolis. Mohammed said he did not study Margari Topolis coming into this fight. He said, I'm not concerned. He had the quote of the week of our fighter meetings. Mohammed said of Margari Topolis, he looks like a punching bag to me. Oof. I would never want to say that because you never know what's going to happen. We still await the entrance of Spiros Margari Topolis. Has not exited his Rolls Royce. Boss, I'm not sure he even entered his Rolls Royce. Well, we're going to find out. We need an opponent. So, uh, well, we have, I heard that uh, here that Luke Rockhold is here. So maybe he can do it. Oh, why not coming in from a yacht? One upsmanship on the <laughs> Rolls Royce, off of the water, and towards the pit comes Spiros Margari Topolis. Look at the intensity. He's ready for the fight. And now, you know, officially in the movie, the big uh, ship in the back is going to blow up, and he just keeps <laughs> walking exactly <laughs> like this, not disturbed by anything. Margari Topolis said, I want to be first in every exchange. Keep moving from the mid-range to the inside. Be smart while being aggressive. You know, those things are the great things to say, and, 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 I, hope, and I always tell people at home, you know, it's... You can say what you want, but it's always hard to pull those kind of things off. These guys, those, are very good pros, so they're completely relaxed once they're in the pit, and they might pull it off. But to pull it off 100%, always hard to do. Look of all business on the face of Margari Topolis as he walks towards his blue corner. This fight wow. at All Fights tonight, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. If level, if a draw after nine minutes, there will be an additional three-minute round, the overtime round. Again, wonder, we're under the auspices and control of the Florida Athletic Commission. They have assigned the referees and the judges, scoring on a 10-point must system. Oh, there we go, Shotokan. Well, Shotokan, if you think about karate, that's typically the karate style that everybody knows. So this guy, let's see what he has on his opponent in reach advantage and weight. Well, the weight, no, the weight is the same, but what is about the reach advantage? Here we go. You know, and he, Rado Ryu. Now, Rado Ryu also, it drives from Shotokan, and these guys, they practice a lot on sparring, and which comes very in handy when you have to fight. We're now set with the official introductions. We send it to our outstanding pit announcer, Rodolfo Roman. And now, introducing your combatants. Peter the first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is hailing out of New York. Mohammed Salem Mohammed. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, hailing from Athens, Greece, Spiros. Margaritopolis! Oh. Jorge Alonso, the referee. Spiros Margaritopolis of Greece versus Mohamed Salem Mohamed of Mauritania, now living here in the U.S. Round one, fight! The bell in round number one. Karate Combat is presented by Bitcoin Project online at bitproj.org and by Origin DNA testing, personal nice. genetic analysis. Some nice straight punches there from Spiros, as he liked to call himself. Blue glove tape for Mohammed, red glove tape for Margari Topolis. And we see a change in stances here. We see Mohammed, I believe, is a southpaw stance. Anyway, his opponent has the opposite stance, so leg sweeps with the inside leg sweeps. You're going to have to watch out for that because you're going to get the shin bone. And if you kick the shin bone with your foot, well, your foot bones are little tiny bones. The shin bone is a strong bone. Your foot is going to lose. Note the stance of Mohammed on the low kick from Margari Topolis. Margari Topolis in with the left hand right back out. Margori Topless again said mid-range to the inside. You see Mohammed using the wall now, slips and down. Two, 
Five seconds allowed on the ground. Muhammad back to his feet. Again using the wall, boss. I love it, but I love also Spiros. He was just throwing the big left kick and his liver kick to the body. You know I love that. Very direct striking guard for Mohamed Salem Mohamed. Mohamed likes to wait for his opponent to make a mistake. You see exactly what he's doing. He comes with a left kick and he moves to the left, takes away the power from the kick, and then hopefully next time, because now he's knows he's going to do it, he can capitalize on it. Look at that, the way he used the wall, jumping forward right away, coming with the right straight over top. Atsuki, it's what they call it in Japan, a straight, a punch. Mohamed Atsuki. looking the angle off, looking to explode off of the wall. Yeah, he's been training. I bet you at home he has one of those pits. Because Stepping he's with the left, looking nice. for the takedown. Nicely done on the it. dump. Big shots. Again, he, five seconds allowed on the ground, raining down with the punches. Very nice job here. Not a stoppage for Jorge Alonso. Boss, five seconds had elapsed. Yeah, if I was Mohammed, I would move away from that corner. But maybe he's doing this on purpose to bait him. Oh. Left hand again from Argare Topolis. You hear Alonso counting. More big shots from the top. The top attacking fighter can only punch. The bottom fighter can punch and throw up kicks. But it was all defense for Mohammed there on the ground. Yeah, but I, it's exactly the same position. He's stale in the corner. He doesn't move. He has to watch out because otherwise it's going to happen again. It happened twice in a row. Why not three times? Switch of stances for Mohammed. Closing stages around number one of this middleweight fight. Break! Break! Break called for by Alonso. There must be immediate action on the clinch or the tie-up. Cannot stalemate with a clinch or a hold. Faint on the side kick from Argari Topolis. Can you see Mohammed trying to angle off of the wall? Head kick doesn't That's get through. Nice. Now the slip. Because you saw his opponent was loading up a right straight, so he gave a left kick to that side, so he couldn't use his right straight. Very smart. That is the end of round number one. Spiros did a nice job. I really like the way he was fighting. I don't like the way what Mohammed was doing. You know, he got in trouble the whole time while he was in the corner, and then he, he didn't move out of the corner. So, I, you know, if you have trouble in the corner, get away. All right, let's take a look at some replays. Nice straight punches. Beautifully done here by Spiros. That's that liver kick that shot down the right straight of his opponent. He didn't get hit there, just lost his footing. And this was a beautiful takedown with raining down strikes. I love this rule here at Karate Combat. Rebroadcast of tonight's event and additional content is available at karate.com and the Karate Combat app. And I saw the trainer from Spiros moving in and out and moving in and out. I think he told him to use some feints, more feints. Round number two. Nice. Heavy pressure early from Margari Topolis. Wild swing and a miss by Mohammed. Oh, nice connected there with the left straight. Takedowns can come from singles, high crotches. You cannot hit a double. You can hit throws and trips inside and outside. Oh, I love that, what Spiros was doing. I mean, Mohammed was loading up for a side kick. He just pushed the side kick to the side and came in with the left straight. Defensive body lock from Mohammed. Trying to get a better position. You see the complaint by Margari Topless to Alonso, and there's the warning from Jorge Alonso. So warning for stalling, right back to it. I like the referee. Jorge Alonso, an extremely experienced combat sports official. Good side kick from the Greek. I love it. A nice job. Mohammed listened to his corner. He's moving out of the corners every time now, you see? Heavy walk down pressure from Margari Topolis. Kick to the body. Mohammed Boss playing a lot of defense in this fight. You know, Mohammed, yeah, he's leading. Huge oh, left hand. Beautiful strikes. Margari Topolis looking to finish. And, and he this does. is it. That is wow. it. Game set match, Spiros Margari Topolis. You know, the whole fight, he was pretty much in control. He really worked it. I, I, I really like his fighting style. He did a great job. Referee Jorge Alonso sees enough. 
rules the stoppage and the TKO win for Margare Topless in our opening bout of the night here in Miami. Karate Combat Inception, second round, technical knockout. All right, let's take a look at some replays. Kunk, dunk, yeah, that right connected there. Oh, and some more. Nice sidekick there to the spleen section of his opponent. Ooh, that was a right straight to the liver, it looked, and which is weird angle, but it worked, and it connected everything with everything. And then that left hand, really the beginning of the end for Mohammed Salem Mohammed Margare Topless, impressive in victory. Ladies and gentlemen, please abstain from using flash photography during the action. This contest comes to an end in the second round, one minute and one second for your winner by way of TKO, Spiros Margaritopoulos. Wow. What a way to kick off the night, right? Spiros Margaritopoulos, again, we go back to our fighter meeting yesterday, boss. He told us, I want to be smart while being aggressive. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. He did just that. Love it. A great opening bout for this, our first ever broadcast event. So glad that you're with us watching around the world, including those of you watching on Karate.com and our Karate Combat app. This is a gorgeous setting. We're under the stars again, Biscayne Bay, and then beyond that, the Atlantic Ocean behind us. Truly unique outdoors. It's windy, but we're dealing with the wind outside. I love it because I'm wearing my suit. It's nice and ro uh, it's nice and relaxed. It's nice and cool. Dude, let's talk to the winner. Who's there with the winner? Tell hey me, guys. Sean. I'm with Spiros with an amazing victory. How are you feeling? Excellent. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. What was your strategy going into tonight? My strategy was to press him in the corner all the time, have the first and the last word in all the fight. I knew he's long, so I, I have to close the distance and punch him and never stop. I tried to take down him a couple of times, it worked, but I always wanted to finish every situation of the match. Did you think it would be uh, over that quick? I expected it to be quicker, man, but he was tough in the first round. I was anticipating the beat, but uh, when I understand after the first round, I knew I could finish him. Great, back to you guys. All right, you know what you saw, you know, he was standing in the southpaw position and he actually went with a right straight to the body and left straight on top. And I hope we're going to see this a lot tonight because that's the way you set up punches. You don't set it up just to the head, go for the body, go to the head, go back and forth. The more you mix and the more areas you hit, different areas, the more successful you're going to be. And that's why he did it. And that's Christian Coletti. He's the third member of our broadcast team. He will be with us with winner interviews post-fight throughout the night. Still three more fights headed your way. Christian Coletti in the Karate Combat Winner's Zone. An impressive win indeed. Margari Topless came out with a plan, with aggression. A spectacular entrance again. Yeah. How high do you go above a Rolls Royce? Well, you come in on a private yacht. All uh, business, yeah. get the TKO. You can, a whole you can buy a whole bunch of <laughs> Rolls Royces from the price of a yacht. That I know. I know also that there's great olives coming from Greece, but also great fighters. So here in Karate <laughs> Combat, again, this is building on the historic sport. For those of you who don't know, and I think most of you watching around the world know, karate has been accepted as an Olympic sport. It will make its debut 2020 in Tokyo in the Summer Olympiad. It's huge not just for karate, but for the world of combat sports. And that's what Karate Combat now is taking advantage of. But this is a more full contact rule set. There are still limitations, but as you can see, it's really wide open action, putting a premium on clean and effective striking. You know, and it's like the, with the limitations when you talk about it. Some fans, they say, yeah, but you can't throw knees, you can't throw low kicks, you can't throw elbows. I said, like, it's very hard for a fighter to control that. I said, listen, we're talking about professional fighters here. They, they should know exactly what they are doing inside that pit. So so if they by accident throw a knee, well, then they don't know exactly what they are doing. So I actually say it's harder to fight like that because you only have certain things you can do. Try to find an opening now. That's what I love about karate combat. In our opening bout of the night in the middleweight division, Spiros Margare Topless defeats Mohamed Salem Mohamed by way of second round TKO. On now to our second fight of the night as we move to the welterweight division. Josh Quayhagen of the United States versus Abdallah Ibrahim of Egypt. Here they come. A new motion picture. Two Rolls Royce. 
Royces. We presume that both fighters are in their respective Rolls Royces. We might have another entrance by Waters we saw from Margaritopoulos. It's almost like a Sakuraba, you know, they pull a trick on us, you never know where the real guy is. It's a magic trick. Look at that, man. I love it. Look at these cars on the side. I will go with the four-door car, but I will go with the walls. You know, my family can fit in there. You know, otherwise I'm going to have to drive around in a little nervous car. Like a Ferrari. This is an outstanding entrance, and first to exit is Rolls-Royce. The American Josh Quayhagen from the United States prides himself on being a very intelligent and tactical fighter. He also prides himself, boss, on great technique and preparation. You know, that's what it is. That's what I said in the opening, you know, gritty and technical. That's a term you cannot put together. It doesn't work, it, it never works, but that's what Quay Hagen is. And I love it because he's in your face, but yet he has a lot of technique on top of that. His opponent, Abdallah Ibrahim from Egypt, now living here in the United States, feels his best asset as a fighter is the ability to see openings very quickly and then immediately capitalize. All right, so let's see what he is going to do. In the welterweight division, Josh Quayhagen versus Abdallah Ibrahim. Karate style is American karate. I love it, so that's pretty much Shotokan. You know, that's what we know here in America. He looks totally relaxed. Well, actually, both fighters look totally relaxed. Ibrahim said fighting for karate combat a greater honor than fighting in the Olympic Games in 2020. He said, without a doubt, this is the biggest moment of my life. You see, and his karate style, Shotokan, it's pretty much the same as his opponent, Koi Egan, is. You know, the American style is very tailored to Shotokan. Ibrahim said, I have no set game plan, no set strategy. I'm a read and react fighter. I like to figure out how to defeat my opponent as the fight progresses. I must stay calm. You know, I like that. And I like also when people say I don't watch tape. I always watch tape, but I watch tape over from the first fight till the last fight because there are always things that they keep on doing. Because otherwise, if you look at the last fight, they might change something. Walking up to then walk down into the pit. This is such a unique setting. The fighters giving the walkthrough yesterday with the pit, everyone just mesmerized. We are now set for bout number two of the evening karate combat inception. Back we go to our pit announcer, Rodolfo Roman. My fans, please, no usage of flash photography. No usage of flash photography. And now, introducing our next combatants. Introducing first, hiding out of the blue corner, hailing from Louisiana, Joshua Quayhagen. Louisiana. And his song. opponent, fighting out of the red corner, hailing from New York, ladies and gentlemen, Abdallah <laughs> Ibrahim. All right, from the pyramids, to Miami. Alan Abelese, the referee, calling both fighters now down into the pit. Round one, round one fight. fight. The bell in round number one. Karate Combat is presented by Bitcoin Project online at bitproj.org and by Origin DNA testing, personal genetic analysis. Blue glove tape for the American Quay Hagen. Red glove tape for the Egyptian now living here in the United States, Abdali Ibrahim. And you see the styles. Oh, look at that. That was a nice setup. Went to the legs, then went for a high kick. Thankfully, that high kick just grazed over the head of Quay Hagen. You can kick below the knee and above the waist. Ibrahim putting those kicks on full display, low to high. Very clever. Oh, the first Mike Gear we see that's a front kick. What that? They call that in Japan a Mike Geary. I'm just Hard trying to educate people at home here. Hard outside kick by Whoa. Quay Hagen. Straight right hand from Ibrahim. Good left hand. Wow, very nice. Both these. Oh, Kim Shot. Dog, it's that over. is it. It's over. Whoa. A one punch walk away knockout win for Abdullah Ibrahim. Holy. Just like that. That was crazy. Man, right on the button. And you know what? I wanted to say you're just talking when he was throwing hooks 
at Quay Hagen's head. Quay Hagen was moving backwards with his upper body. He was leaning backwards, and I said it's a very dangerous thing to do because you can't if you can't go any further back. Well, you're done. You need to use footwork in order to move backwards. And then he got hit with that hook. Men, let's take a look at the replay coming up right now. And now you see there's the left hook, man. It was on the button, perfectly timed. Yeah, that's it. You know, you can be the toughest guy on the planet, but if they connect, oh, at the right spot, at the right time, it's lights out. There are knockouts, and then there are knockouts. Huge win for Mohamed Salem Mohamed. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be amazed. How, how long is this going to stand? Because this was early in the fight. This was only a few seconds. So this could be a record that they're going to hold for a long time, that he is going to hold for a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest comes to an end in the first round, 56 seconds for your winner by way of knockout, Abdullah Ibrahim. Four seconds shy of a minute is all it took for Abdullah Ibrahim to win this welterweight fight in stunning and dramatic fashion. The short left hand and putting Quay Hagen to bed. He almost got taken down there by his coach, <laughs> you know, and he can't do that because he will never fight his coach, I guess. Quay Hagen boss talked about coming in without throwing punches, really trying to cut the angles, apply the pressure, tactically wearing down his opponent, but Ibrahim figuring this out quickly. Yeah, but you could see also, yeah, he got connect there, but you saw right away from the beginning, and I was talking about the similar styles they had in fighting. They were moving the same, ah, that left hook, oi, 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 oi. They were moving the same, they were bouncing the same, they were doing everything. You could see that their styles were very the same. And then at that moment, it's all about the guy who controls the distance the best and who has the best aim and who looks the best for the opening. Oh, well, Ibrahim saw the opening, connect, right straight missed, left hook, fully connected, on the button, yeah, it's lights out. Sorry for Quay Hagen, but I'm pretty sure this guy is going to be back because I know this guy, he's tough. Christian Coletti is now in the Karate Combat Winner's Zone. Hi. That was an awesome fight. Uh, I've been prepared for this fight, and I heard that my opponent is uh, he's fighting MMA and he's fighting the Bellator. But well, you know, I don't care because I'm a world champion too, three times, and I've been prepared for this very, very well. And I was ready for anyone to fight all over the world. So I'm going to be here to fight anyone, anytime. Quay Hagen's a tough match. Did you expect it to be over that quickly? Actually, I didn't expect it to be that quickly. But it was easy. He was open all the time. Like, I see him when he coming in. He was open, so... And I was thinking to work on the timing. Because if I work on the timing, I got it. And that's what happened. Tell me about the end. You guys had so much respect towards each other. Yeah, of course. It's karate at the beginning and at the end. It's all about respect. We pair each other when we start. We pay out each other after we end. Anything else? Uh, I'm, I'm very excited for the next fight, and thank you guys for watching. We look forward to it. Congratulations. Yeah. Abdullah Ibrahim said this is the biggest moment of his life, and he gets the biggest win of his life, and he does it in front of one of the true greats of mixed martial arts, Luke Rockhold, with us here in Miami. That's his brother on his, uh, on his right side for us left. Also, we saw one of the greatest female fighters in all of MMA, Jessica Aguilar, a yeah. native of South Florida, coming out for karate combat. Coming out for karate combat, choking me. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, I but saw But you know that. what? She left an opening open. Beautiful you know, she technique. didn't lock it up, so at least I could do that. <laughs> she, she, was, she was helping me. I Trust saw you two on one <laughs> boss. That yeah. was nice. That would have been bad, you know, if she would have really locked it up. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's an animal. We've been talking about this unique rule set all night. Our opening two bouts, we're seeing it on full display. Again, what's being encouraged here is clean, aggressive striking. You know, and we saw it, you know. It's, it's now we uh, we arrived to the guys who are a multiple-time world champion. You just said he was a three-time world champion, Ibrahim. You know, so now we see guys with the technique who wait for openings, and then they capitalize on the mistake of the uh, opponent, and it's working. For him, it worked perfect. I expect to see more. Oh, by the way, if we go further, happy birthday, Kevin James. <laughs> I, don't, I had to put it in there. 
And we see Luke Rockhold in the crowd. It's great the embrace that Karate Combat has received from the combat sports world. I know so many of you watching globally are huge fans of MMA, huge fans of Muay Thai, huge fans of kickboxing, huge fans of boxing, huge fans of grappling. We're all of the above, boss. Karate Combat now fully entrenched in the sports fighting world. Still to come tonight, it is our main event of the evening at the catch weight of 191 pounds. Andras Virag versus El Haji Endor. Again, both fighters supremely confident, really dismissive of each other's skill set. You know, yeah, that's it's a good thing on one side, but you know, it is, is it really? We're gonna have to figure it out. <laughs> this is really this is funny because there's so, so much wind, all the papers are flying around here. Both these guys, we know that black magic, he has the reach advantage so his opponent is going to need to fight inside Viraj and if he can do that that could be trouble for Black Magic but hey I'm just talking about it. we're going to find out tonight who is going to actually live by the rules that he made tonight Karate Combat Inception is available live around the world on Karate.com and on the Karate Combat app as well as our distribution partners Daily Motion, Fight TV, YouTube, FIVA, the Fight Network, Titan Channel, CBS Sports Live, and Pluto TV. Boss, you and I have called fights around the world. For me, it's 18 countries. You probably have me top. This is truly the most unique setting that I've ever witnessed and worked combat sports. Me too, and I'm loving it. I'm outside the field still most. We're on the set of uh, Kickboxer, right? But only- I thought you were gonna say, here comes the boom. We're, we're with real fighters. No, because <laughs> that was a completely different movie. <laughs> this is a pit. I mean, if you think about a pit, how many times people wanted to do fights in pits and it never worked and then boom, these guys come up with this design which is by the way patented and and, and i go like man wh why didn't anybody come up with that sooner you talked about kickboxer when i saw the pit yesterday for the first time in person i was thinking about my all-time favorite film the jean-claude van damme 1988 classic blood sport Oof. i was looking for paco i thought maybe he might be on the card you remember that <laughs> i love that movie man jean-claude from them what the what a guy. I still follow this guy. I, I'm pretty amazed with him. Actually, I know that he trained with some K-1 champions, and all these K-1 champions told me that he's actually pretty good. Our crowd tonight, by invitation only, you see under the stars, a gorgeous night here in South Florida. We're in downtown Miami. We are now set for our co-main event of the evening. Oh, there the cars are coming again and again and again. In the welterweight division, Dionisio Gustavo from the Dominican Republic versus Alexander Bruderbond from France. The Frenchman, the fighter we alluded to at the top of our broadcast, the one who told us he wants to be like a flash in like his fight. A flash, and that means you would think he would run in and come back. No, 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 because this guy really likes to control the distance, and he says that's the key to success. And I say the same thing to people. If you can control the distance and you do that very well, you're probably going to win the fight. So I'm really looking forward to, do it, to, to see this if he can actually pull that off. You note the gloves. All fighters tonight here in Karate Combat are wearing four ounce thumbless gloves. There's nice padding around the knuckles. I was playing with them earlier today. All of the fighters to a man loves these gloves. Uh, uh, me too. I mean, they sent it to me. I gave it to Joe Rogan. We're doing the podcast and even Joe puts them on. He goes, man, these are really nice gloves. Dionisio Gustavo feels he has very good strength, very good speed for the welterweight division. He said, I want to attack from the mid range. Buderbon extremely confident with his kicks. He said, I like to fight in the kicking range, but be aggressive from the kicking range. Oof, nice. And there we have Buderbon. Buderbon said, a lot of movement, be elusive, quick with strikes, in and out with my movement and in and out with strikes, not just with feints, but with actual strikes. You know, and the way he said it also, flash. That means he likes to go pop, pop, back and forth, back and forth. Don't do it slow, do it flash. It's like Bruce Lee would say, controlled anger. Dionisio Gustavo, a veteran of the military in the Dominican Republic, extremely calm for this fight. Oh, Shito, yeah, Shito. 
You know, you, you would, it's the same as Watto. They're more finesse, they're more fluid. It's a little bit different style as Shotokan. Shotokan is more rigid and more powerful. But that doesn't mean anything because they're more fluid. Budaban. Budaman, Shito, same thing, man. We have the same styles, two of the same styles here. We watch a lot of technique. Part-time ninja, and he's a fitness model on top of that. Man, now I'm jealous. Moments away from the start of our co-main event. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is your co-main event of the evening. Let's introduce the combatants. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, hailing from Santo Domingo, República Dominicana, Dominican Republic, Dionisio Gustavo. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, hailing from Marseille, France, Alexander Buderbaum. Jorge Alonso, the referee for this welterweight fight. Round one, fight! There is the bell. Karate Combat is presented by Bitcoin Project online at bitproj.org and by Origin DNA testing, personal genetic analysis. Man, it's so cool. Both guys have the same style and they move the same, you see? It's so cool to see that the styles are actually all the same. Oh, nice right straight over the top there. All right, Suki. Blue glove from tape Gustavo. for Gustavo, red glove tape for Buderbond. Counter right hand from Gustavo, who was waving his opponent in earlier a moment ago. And that's the second time he does that, so Buderbond has to watch out. He cannot keep coming forward because Gustavo's got great counters. And he's switching stats. Oh, Huge another right one. hand and another. Look at that. This might be done. Whoa. And it it's is. It. This is no. He just broke the record that we had. Just like that, a first round finish for Dionisio Gustavo, courtesy of the right hand. Man, he connected twice with it before, and then a full one at the end. Did you have a clear view of the second shot? Let's take a look at the replay. Watch, he's got really good distance. Oh, that's, he just went for it, and then one over the top, yeah, that sealed the deal there. Boom, oh, and that second one, yeah. Once you're dazed and you're gonna get another shot on top of it. You know, the thing is this, the first shot, you're ready for impact, so you're still braced, but then you're a little loose, and then at the moment you're very loose and then get hit, that's when you're going down. Gustavo Boss said, I'm gonna be tactical when I need to be tactical, aggressive when I need to be aggressive. He sensed the moment, he took full advantage, finished with those back-to-back -back jackhammer right hands. Back we go to our pit announcer, Rodolfo Roman. This contest comes to an end at 42 seconds in the first round by your way. Uh, your winner, by way of knockout, Dionisio Gustavo! Man, he just beat my record with one second. 42 seconds. My very first fight in Japan was 43 seconds. I was so happy now this guy goes 42. Are you kidding? <laughs> in the previous bouts, Abdullah Ibrahim defeating Josh Quay Hagen in 56 seconds of round one. And now in our co-main event, Anisio Gustavo defeating Alexander Buderbon in 42 seconds of the opening round. Wow, easy money for him. He doesn't like to sweat a lot, I think. He just wants to come in, you know, get it over and get my paycheck. And that's a fun room in Miami. Come on now. As we spoke to Gustavo yesterday, he was supremely calm. And you and I know when fighters are very calm, they're either actually that relaxed or they're trying to convince themselves that they're calm and they're yeah. absolutely a bundle of nerves. I felt confident that Gustavo really was that relaxed. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. And you know, the calm fighter always beats the aggressive fighter. So Gustavo single-mindedly coming forward with pressure, confidence in his punches. Again, we go back to what he said. I have a lot of power for this weight class, and he put it on full display. You know, he connected a few times already with the straight punch, you know, and that, that was the third time when he landed it, and that was the knockout. But before that, he knew his opponent came in too fast, and he stayed there. The thing about going in and out is very simple, because if I go in, your opponent comes with the counter. Poof, if you stand still, that's a hit. But if you go in and out, 
then you don't have that problem. But, you know, it's the little nerves that you have at the first big event that they have, the main big event, they had the events before, but we're standing down with an interview right now. You let me know. We send it to Christian Coletti, who is in the Karate Combat Winner's Zone. Hey, guys, I'm with uh, Gustavo with the 42-second knockout. How does he feel about that? What does he say? Me siento bien, me siento bien, quería más pelea, por eso le di un poquito más de chance para que pelee, pero tuve que noquearlo. He feels very good. He wished the fight lasted a little a little longer. That's why he tried to give give him a little a little bit of a chance to get up. But they, they, they gave him a break, but you know, hey, he's what it is. He he's he's happy with the knockout. Were you expecting it to be that quick? Pensando que iba a terminar tan rápido la pelea. Sí. Te lo dije, él habló mucho en su entrevista, decía que yo era fácil y el que resultó ser fácil era él. Te dije, cuando él probara el puño del capitán, se iba a arrepentir de pelear. Well, um, for all the talking that Budaban did, uh, <laughs> uh, I told you it was going to be an easy fight and um, I told you once he felt the, the punch of the capitán, it would be over. <laughs> the capitán is his nickname that he goes by. Anything else? a todo mi pueblo, mi país, Santo Domingo, República Dominicana, que gracias por el apoyo y es de Dominicana para el mundo. I'd like to say hello to everybody in Dominican Republic for for encouraging me, for being there for me, and from here on out, it's, we're go, we're going to take over the world. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Back to you guys. I think the last time I heard a fighter say I wish it was longer was Mike Tyson versus Henry Tillman to apply more punishment. Gustavo winning at 42 seconds saying, yeah, I wish I had a little more time, I guess, to jackhammer more right hands. You see, I've never been like that. I, you know, if I can get it over with fast, I want to get it over with fast because so many things can happen. I can simply walk backwards and misstep and I'm, I hurt my ankle and the guy knocks me out. Anything can, I, a cut can make them stop the fight. So I always say when somebody's out, he's out, I'm happy he's out. I'm not going to say, oh, I wish you got up and I wanted to show my tech. No, I want him to stay down. So I don't know if the other guys are making that up or they really want to do that. Because if you really want to keep on onslaughting a person, you're a real cool guy. One fight remains. It is our main event of the evening. Andres Virog versus El Haji Indoor. This is going to be something special set at the catch weight of 191 pounds, our main event. Yeah, I saw Black Magic fight before. Today he walked around in his white suit looking freaking stylish, like from Miami Vice. He looked cool. He is cool. He can fight. He's got the reach advantage. Very hard guy to beat. But you know, Viraj is, an, uh, is a really tough guy. And, and, and he, whatever he says, when he puts his mind to it, he might do it. And if he fight, can fight on the inside, that's the trick here. He might pull off a victory. but. We don't know. We have to see what's going to happen tonight. I don't know. I think that Black Magic is a hard guy to beat. Viraj Boss made it clear he's not here to be an opponent. He is here to be a winner. Oh, all right. Well, let's see if he can do that. At the catch weight of 191 pounds, Andres Virag versus El Haji Endor, and there you see Endor. Yeah, and that was the Shotokan style. You know, that's the hard style, the stiff style. The typically, what I said before, when people talk about karate, they probably think this is karate, Shotokan karate. That's the most used karate in the United States. And he fights a guy from a similar style, you see, but he has the reach disadvantage. So he's going to need to fight inside the reach of his opponent to be the most powerful. If you'd like to watch our broadcast again, you can do it as often as you'd like and for free. All you need to do is go online to karate.com or you can watch on the Karate Combat app. We also have additional video content, fighter news, our upcoming schedule and much more. Sign up for email updates and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Tag at Karate Combat and use the hashtag InceptionMiami for reactions to tonight's event across all social media platforms. Man, look at there. 
Well, that could be. They can come in with the train as well. Right? I'm waiting want. for Endure to make that entrance. Yeah, jumping off. Jumping off from that train into the pit. Now, that would be something. Virak said, I'm going to make Endure panic through pressure. That's a very bold statement. Again, both fighters not only confident in their own skills, but really dismissive of their opponent's skills. You know, but I, I like what he's saying because when you fight a guy with a long reach and he's really good at staying at the distance, well, you take pretty much all power away if you come constantly forward because if you come constantly forward, you can't put your feet on the ground. You can't ground your feet. You can strike, but if your feet are not on the ground, you can't put your body weight into the strike. You see what I mean? So if you fight a very technical guy or a guy with a longer reach, push, 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 push. We see there's a lot in other sports as well. You know, look at Mike Tyson. Right, Mike Tyson, he always fought the tallest guy. He was always the shortest guy, but he finds a way to fight inside. And once he's inside, he has the bigger power. Because if a tall guy with a long reach, he's powerful here. If you're here, you see, he can't load up as much. But the shorter guy can load up more because his arms are shorter. That's why I'm talking about distance. Distance, you know, we talked about it many times today. It's all about this. Fighting is all about distance. You know, the one who can control the distance is probably going to be the guy who's going to win the fight. Endure said, my first sport was my nation's first sport as well in Senegal. Senegalese wrestling, it has elements of Greco-Roman, it has elements of Judo. It's upper body contact. Endure said, I'm going to use that against Virag when he comes inside. Yeah, that's a very smart thing to do because, you know, take your guy off his feet, put him on the ground every time you got to get back up. It's a nightmare. You know, because you don't want to be there, but he controls it. And once an opponent starts controlling the situation, it does something to you mentally. He, of course, is the great boss, Root, and I'm Sean Wheelock. So pleased that you're with us live watching our first ever Karate Combat broadcast around the world. Many of you are with us on Karate.com and also across all online social media platforms. And a reminder, if you have not done so already, download the completely free of charge Karate Combat app available for all operating systems. One fight still remains. Again, it is our main event of the evening. The Hungarian Andras Virag versus the fighter from Senegal, now living in Long Island, or more correctly, on Long Island, New York, El Haji Endur. Endur asked me to say thanks to his primary sponsor, Bob Jesperger, who is proudly watching at home tonight back in New York. Endure said, without the support of Jesperger, I would not have this opportunity. Oh, nice. I like Long Island because that's where we're shooting Kevin Can't Wait. <laughs> we await our main event, Karate Combat Inception, our first ever televised event. Many more to come. Follow us throughout 2018 and beyond. We will be in exotic locales, always unique settings. Boss, it's going to be a world tour for us. I hope so. It's going to be fun. I want to go around the world. You know what I also like about Karate Combat, what they're doing? They, they give this pit this idea to, you know, if you want to open a dojo and can have a pit, can you imagine you have a pit in your own dojo? They get this whole style. So now people around the world, they're watching this show and they say, hey, man, that's really cool. I would love to have a pit like that. In my dojo, you become a Karate Combat dojo. And then you're going to produce fighters. And I'm pretty sure if you do that, they can fight right here. 25 years ago, November 12th, 1993, that was UFC 1 created by the great Art Davey. He had something revolutionary in mind, became known as The Cage. 25 years later here in Miami, we see something again revolutionary to the world of combat sports, the karate combat pit. Just like in MMA, fighters had to learn how to fight with the cage. They have to learn how to fight with the pit. That's the thing, but th that's why I love this pit, because a lot of people tried it. The original idea from the UFC was a pit but they couldn't make it work. This is the perfect pit with the 50, 45 degree angle wall. I think this is perfect. I love it. I, I, I love the fact that fighters can use it in order to, uh, to, to, to use it as a jump, so to say, for their Toby Geary's, and that means flying kicks, jump off, and even flying punches. Get a reminder on social media tonight, at Karate Combat, and use the hashtag Inception Miami. We're with you for Karate Combat Inception. We await the entrance to our main event, the Hungarian Andrej Virag versus the fighter from Senegal, again, now living in the United States, El Haji Indoor, set at the catch weight of 191 pounds. If you've joined us late, all fights tonight on this stacked card scheduled for three three-minute rounds. If there is a draw, and we have not had that tonight, but if there is a draw, 
There is an additional three minute round, the overtime round. Both and fighters though are coming for the first round finish in this. Yeah, so I, I, I think they all want to do it. You know, that's, that's what happens when the fighters know that the world is watching. There's that extra little oomph into the fight and that's why we're seeing knockouts tonight. And Doris said, not only do I want to win, I want to be memorable. I want people to watch and know my name. That's a good way to do it. You know, and now you better live up to that expectation. No pressure. So already three fights tonight that you've seen with us watching live internationally. In our opening bout, Karate Combat Inception in the middleweight division, the Greek Spiros Margare Topless recorded a second round TKO versus the fighter from Mauritania now living in the United States, Mohamed Salem Mohamed. Bout number two in the welterweight division, Abdullah Ibrahim from Egypt living in the U.S. defeated the American Josh Quahigan, 56 seconds by knockout round number one. And in our co-main event, Dionisio Gustavo from the Dominican Republic defeated the Frenchman Alexander Buderbon by way of knockout, 42 seconds of round number one. Again, both fighters want to end it quickly. We will soon find out as we are ready for our main event. Zone. What is this? <laughs> Are they going slow? The entrance in the Rolls Royces, as we've seen for all fighters tonight, with the notable exception of Spiros Margaritopoulos, who had an entrance courtesy of Biscayne Bay off of the yacht. I, I would do it like uh, Vega style, you know, open the, the roof and stand out of the roof. Well, that's what I would do. If there is actually an open roof, that would be funny. And again, you see the fighters will walk through the gauntlet of six cars, three Lamborghinis and three Ferraris. The Rock right there, boom, standing with the blue tape around his wrist. And there we have Black Magic with the red tape around the wrists. And Doris said, I'm a natural born fighter. I'm never nervous. Fighting has always been a part of my life. Varag told us, my best attribute as a fighter is my heart, my will, my determination. He's going to need it. He's going to need to push. Push the fight. So much respect flowing between our two main event fighters. Respect flowing freely back and forth with all fighters on this card. Everyone to a man. Appreciates that they're a part of something special tonight, Karate Combat Inception. You hear the ovation for El Haji Endor. Varag said, I know Endor is going to have the height advantage and the reach advantage. And as you talked about with Mike Tyson, boss, he said, I have to get to the inside. Varag said, he will panic through my pressure and my volume. I love it. I love it when fighters are confident. Confidence is a major factor in fighting, all of, in every sport. And you're told us, I'm going to showcase a wide variety of strikes. I'm going to move, I'm going to cut angles, I'm going to look for the spectacular. The moment has arrived now for our two main event fighters. Andres Virag of Hungary, versus El Haji Endur from Senegal. To get us started, here's our pit announcer, Rodolfo Roman. And now, it's time for your main event. Get up, let's get loud! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man hails from Budapest, Hungary. Ladies and gentlemen, Andros Firag. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Hailing from Long Island, New York, El Haji Endor. 
Alan Abel is the referee. Oof, let's jump in there with the splits. Why not? Round one, fight! Round number one, Karate Combat is presented by Bitcoin Project online at bitproj.org and by Origin, DNA testing, personal Oof. genetic analysis. Blue Opponent glove tape for Virag, red glove tape for Endure. Virag started with the right low kick, uh, Gate Hungary as they call it, below the knee, but right away he got countered by Black Magic, so he has to watch out. Nice right high kick there, Mawashi Yodangiri is what they call it in Japan. You saw the head kick land, but it just took Virag off balance as he was back against the wall. Oh. Hard low kick. Yep, and that's to the calf section. You got the tibula and fibula. The fibula is the tinier board. Look at that. Foot sweeps. That's what he said he liked, remember? And he's using that right now. Again, five seconds allowed on the ground to stand up for Mabelise. Bouncing the step of Virag. The confidence with the low hands of El Haji endure. Relies on his quickness and on his power. Let's go, let's go. Call for action. Yep. Nice job. Nice, Abel is encouraging the oh! fighters. Big low kick again. You know, those are really hurting. Not good if you get a lot of those and you have to fight a tournament in one night. That's a problem. Short oh. right hand on the inside from Endure. Virage right back out, switches stances. Wow. Virage had a, has a great chin because that was a pretty good punch. Didn't even flinch. Stiff left jab. Can you see Endure slowly walking down Virage, using the angles of this four-sided pit? You know, the thing what uh, Virage is doing, he's the, the jumping he's doing, he should stop that. Because at the moment when he jumps and he sets off and then he gets kicked, that's when you're going to be taken down with that sweep from Endure, from Black Magic. Who is, that's, that's his favorite thing to do, he said. Virage circling out, looking for a better angle. He's actually stopping, stopped bouncing now, so that's a good thing. Door loaded up, pulled back the right hand. In the heavy forward pressure, another right from El Haji and Door. Man, he's only coming forward. He's just standing his ground, Black Magic. Look at that nice front kick with straight over the top. Oh, another low kick. There just we go. The knee. Look at those punches. That's it. I would go full blast. Big shots. Not the wow. end, just the five second count. Fight on, says referee Alan Abelis. Varag was in all sorts of trouble there, boss. Yeah, but Varag said before that he's known for his toughness, you know, so this can take a lot. If he keeps going like this and just takes the punishment and goes into the second or third round, it might take a little bit of heart away from his opponent. Oh, look at this takedown. But Black Magic is smart. He keeps holding him so he can't create space and distance that you need in order to punch. Will he just run through with a tackle? Virag just grinding heavy pressure there, and to your point, Endure limiting the, the offense from yeah, Virag from the top position. Closing stages, round number one of our main event. Andres Virag versus El Haji Endure. Oh. We are headed to round two. Nice. But you see, Virag, he's going to keep on coming. He's going to keep on coming. So it's all cool. Black Magic completely dominated this first round, and he can probably do the second one as, as well. But what if Virag is going to hang in there you know, and, and, and Black Magic gives him everything he can, but he can't really stop him. Is that going to do something to him mentally? That's always a big question in my mind. Let's take a look at some replays here. Look at this. Boom. Beautiful leg sweep. But of course, because he's leaning on the front leg, since his back leg is on the wall. And here, almost again, but since his back leg was not on the, on the wall, and his weight was not on the front wall, that's why he didn't fall. But this now, on the front leg, sorry. This last one, again, once your weight is on the front leg and Second then they sweep down, it, yeah, you're going to go down. In the pit. Let's go, let's go, in the pit, in the pit. So if you let's fight go. against a guy like Black right Mama here, like Black Magic, Fight. you're going to have to watch out putting your weight on your front foot. Round number two. Endure pulling back that kick. Can note the hand position of El Haji Endure. Nice. Oh, that was a really nice hard spinning right back kick. kick from Indoor. Nothing yep. there. Short right hand from Indoor. Again, Boss, you see the heavy forward pressure, the walk down of Virag by Indoor. Oof. 
Yeah, Varag came in with that right kick, but he didn't push it through. He's got he stopped on impact, and that's you gotta have to drive that power through in order to sweep him or have an impact. Level change from Virag. Trying to throw the right to the body. Good movement from both fighters. I like both fighters' distance also, and the way he moved Virag out of the corner. He doesn't let himself get locked up there. Can the duck under the level change from Virag? Trying to find a way in. And that's his way in there. But if I was him, I would go try to go for a takedown. Score, 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 right? Oh, head nice. kick. And again, he needs to set that up. And it's almost when he connects that the power is off. He needs to push it a little bit more through. Most of the time when you kick with right and you step your left foot a little bit more to the left, you will have that effect. It will go through the target instead of against it. Another powerful low kick. Nice body lock there, takedown. But the referee stopped it right away because he was leading up against the, ce the fence. The ceiling. What the <laughs> heck? <laughs> I'm Dutch. <laughs> I don't know the Dutch word for ceiling, so you Love got full. me. <laughs> Took me a long time to say Eredivisie. <laughs> yeah. Left hand back to the inside comes the Hungarian Andres Verag. But you see he's doing much better in the second round here. I think his trainer told him to lean a little bit more on your back foot. Endure Boss cutting really hard angles and still the walk down pressure of his opponent, Andres Virag. Literally cornering his opponent. Yeah, what you can do now, you can move a little bit to the left so you give an opening to the right for your opponent to escape. But since you know that, you can capitalize on that, you see? So I give you, I move it to the left, I know that my opponent's gonna escape to the right and capitalize on that by throwing a point or right at her kick. Step in right hand, big swings from Endure. Very impressive what Endure is doing, moving backwards while punching. That really needs great technique in order to pull that off. Bigger swings now from Endure. Yeah, but the Hungarian is hanging in there, look at that. Oh, he got hit with a big right, 10 Brunch seconds. Spinning against the fence, 360, now fully on his bike. Jack Five Hammer shots. Seconds. Closing seconds of round number two. And that's it. There is the bell. Wow. This broadcast of Karate Combat and KOKO Sports Management is copyrighted. It is protected under the laws of the United States and other countries, and its unauthorized duplication, distribution, or exhibition may result in civil liability and criminal prosecution. So there. Okay, I'll stay away from it. I, I was going to build one myself, <laughs> but that's, uh, that's <laughs> over now. I'm going to ask him for permission. Okay, Endur got really pushed. He's taking his mouthpiece out. Well, it's the third round, so that's not an, uh, a weird thing to see. So but this could be the final round of our main event, but again, under our rule set of karate combat in conjunction with the Florida Athletic Commission, if it's a draw, if it's level after three rounds, nine minutes, one additional three-minute round, the overtime round, but boss, by my unofficial scorecard, Endur is up right now two rounds to nil. Yeah, I think so too, although the second round, I think Viraj did much, much better. It's, uh, if he can continue round that three. going up style, he might take the third fight. round. It's going to be too late, but if he can connect with a big punch, you never know. It's going to be hard. show of respect right back to work. Right back to the bounce in this step of Andras Virag Boom. and another low kick. You see, but now he knows. Oh, look at that. A nice moving to the left there from, the, from Black Magic. Low kick oh. and the takedown. You see, and again, smart. You know, you see, you know that Black Magic worked on that. As soon as somebody takes him down, hold him. In the grounded situation, if one or both of the fighters' knees touch the ground, they cannot continue to throw punches. The top fighter can throw punches, the bottom fighter can throw punches and up kicks. Referee tells him to fight. They have to go. Oh, that's a big low kick. Why not send him? Lance landed flush. Another low kick. Yeah, that's that foot sweep thing that he likes. That's his favorite technique. He says, "Look at this, completely dominating now. now." Separation by referee Alan Abeles, and time called by Abeles. But man, Virag, he's right. What he said. He's tough. He's hanging in there. He's not stopping. No quitting in this guy. Time call to assess the cut. 
Yeah, they can wipe it off. It's like a minute and a half left or so. I don't know what the time is right now, but I mean, if it's not dripping in the aisle, let's, let's continue. Yeah, it's cool. Nice. The cut in the brow. Back, back. Touch of gloves. Resumption of round number three. Will this be the final round of our main event? Oh. Or will we have an overtime round? Switch of stances again for Virag. Back to the center of the pit. And again, Virag came with a high kick, but his opponent moved a little bit to the right, and the power was out. So he really needs his foot footwork. He needs to change something. If he gives a right high kick, with a right high kick, he needs to step a little bit more to the left with his left. Back to the clinch. That will transfer the power through the target. Wide base stance now for Virag. Stalemate at the moment, Ooh. clipping right hand from Endur. Faint on the side kick from Virag. Again, Abeliz calls for action. He needs more of that. Faint more. And every time when he want, runs in and starts striking, he's not looking at his target. Another big low kick from Endur. Endur now baiting Virag to come to the inside. Closing stages of round three. In comes Virag on the slip. Endur taking full advantage. You see the kicks off of the wall by Virag. Almost scissor kicking. He hit underneath his own butt on the head. Did you see that? I hope we're going to see that in the replay. That was awesome. <laughs> like a hook at an angle around his own leg while he was sitting on the face of his opponent. <laughs> I love the pit boss. The I fighters do as well. They need to move. And especially Varag. He needs to go, He's, he can only win by knockout now. Endure fighting like he believes he is up on the scorecards. 10 seconds. Final seconds of round three, quite possibly the final seconds of our main event. There is the bell. All right, for what I understand, they queued this up, the points that I was talking about. Watch this. Oh. <laughs> A reminder that Karate Combat is online at karate.com. Many of you are watching through karate.com tonight. And if you have not done so already, download the Karate Combat app. It's available now completely free of charge for all operating systems. And yes, Sam, thanks for the text, buddy. Both fighters now must wait to see if there is a fourth round in overtime round, or if there will be a winner determined by the three Florida Commission judges through the nine minutes of this catchweight main event. 191 pounds, Andres Virag versus El Haji Endur. Yeah, this, it's, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not a judge, you know, but Black Magic pretty much took this fight. The heavy forward pressure from Endur and under this revolutionary scoring system, and I don't use that word lightly as I am huge with rules and regs, there is more weight given to effective kicking than to effective punching, and that really shows the baseline of what karate combat is trying to accomplish, boss. That's it, yeah, kicks, focus on kicks. When you think karate, you don't really think about punches right away. Yeah, you think about punches, breaking boards, and all that stuff, but you think about the kicks, and kicks are slower than hands, so if you can land a kick, it's harder to do it than to land a hand strike, and that's why they count more. We're now set as we go back to our pit announcer, Rodolfo Roman. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to our judges' scorecard. All our judges scored it 30 to 27. For your winner, by unanimous decision, Laja Endor! Three rounds to none across the board, 30-27 and the unanimous decision win for El Haji Endur. Not a finish, but high quality nonetheless.
from El Haji Endur in victory. And it, it was hard, you know. Viragi said before that he's going to be tough to beat, and, 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 and it was. He kept hanging in there. He just could take, can take a lot of punishment, but that's what karate fighters do. That's what karate is. You know, taking punishment and coming back the whole time, and he just hang in there. Sometimes you can't finish because you can't control what your opponent is like. Full credit boss to Andras Virdrag. Willing to take punishment to step inside. He knew he had to solve the range, solve the distance. Like you said earlier, and I fully agree, really, combat sports is all about distance. Yeah, it's all about distance. And, and, and who is the guy now who can beat Black Magic? I mean, he's putting himself on the map right now, right? I mean, I, he has a loss that I know of, maybe in the past, but all his fights right here, he won. So I think the guy to beat right now with the big mark on his back is Black Magic. In our main event, Karate Combat Inception from outdoors under the stars on a gorgeous late spring night in Miami, Florida. El Haji Endor defeats Andres Virag by unanimous decision. Boss, this has really been a special event. Outstanding fights tonight. Not a finish again, not a knockout or TKO in our main event, but still both fighters going hard over the nine minutes. Well, we had four fights. We got three finishes and, and, and it went fast. And then the main event, I'm actually really happy that it happened like this because now we saw both guys, great technique, and then eventually the guy with a little bit better technique won the fight. Christian Coletti is now with our winner. Hey, guys, I'm here live with Black Magic. How did you feel out there? I feel great. I feel very, very, very excited and uh, very happy at the same time. It's a lot of fun to watch. Oh uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun, you know. Every sport have a champion. Every champion has a journey. A journey is here, okay? I work so hard for this, and uh, it's a little bit different from uh, the sport we were doing, but this one is, uh, it gets me more excited. I feel myself here more than any other sport, yeah. So Black, uh, so Black Magic, tell me, what's next? What's next for you? Every, I think everyone's going to start to try to come for you and try to get, you know, your 2-0 right now. I'm here for everybody who's in my weight class. So I don't pick, I don't choose uh, opinion. I, 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 I'm a fighter. Yeah. You know, whoever be in my, my, uh, my weight class, if you want, we can fight right now. <laughs> right now. Back to you guys. Thank you, Christian. Again, that's our Karate Combat Winners Zone. Outstanding to have our post-fight interviews with the victors all night long. So on our four-fight main card, we saw a second-round finish, two first-round finishes, both in under one minute, and then our main event going all three rounds. I love it. You know, we saw a little bit of everything. We saw the explosion, we saw this, and then we at the end, we, and it was all technique, don't get me wrong, but the last fight is just good because both these guys were tough. And you know, like I said before, the guy then with the best distance control and with the best foot sweeps. And we were talking about it in the opening, you know. If Iraq wants to come in, he wants to fight on the inside, but he's going to maybe set himself up for the foot sweeps, which are the favorite technique from Black Magic. And he, well, you saw it. He did it like four or five times in the entire fight. Every time he did it, he fell on the ground and raining down punches, and that's why he got the victory. Here at Karate Combat Inception, our first ever globally televised event for Karate Combat. Boss, what we saw is one. This rule set works. It produces clean striking, effective aggression, really high quality throughout. We also saw really top level matchmaking. Over the course of 2018, Karate Combat will be holding events across the world in exotic locations and unique settings. You can watch it all live and free on karate.com and on the Karate Combat app. For the great Boss Root and Christian Coletti, Rodolfo Roman, and our entire crew, I'm Sean Wheelock from Miami, Florida. Thanks for watching Karate Combat Inception. Now stay tuned for additional coverage of Karate Combat.
In the red corner, Dionisio Gustavo from Dominican Republic. In the blue corner, Rafael Akayev from Azerbaijan. Round one. Ready? Ready? Second. Round two.
10 seconds. is the blue Rafael Akaya from Azerbaijan. <laughs> <laughs> 